I think we've always had a very different um, proposition, to be absolutely frank with you, from the others. Um, we have always thought that um, it's really important to lead with insight, um, to invest in our understanding of the consumer when they're outside the home, and to start from there. So you start with the consumer, what are the insights, and then what are the potential solutions in out of home. And I think that's always differentiated us in that sense. And I believe that going forward, we've continued to reinvent ourselves and we've continued to adapt to the changing market. So, for example, currently, our focus is really on real-time content. We're really pioneering that dynamic real-time content on out-of-home screens. And also how you can use data to be smarter about how to target and be efficient about how to target the right people with the right message at the right time. So I honestly think that um, we've maintained a clear differentiating vision from the rest of the market as pioneers in out of home. Well, India is an increasingly important market for us, not least of all because of its size. This is a very successful operation here, and um, they're growing at a faster rate than most of the other markets. Um, I think um, Harish today was saying to me that this year um, the growth is 15% on last year, which is dub double-digit growth. Um, in, a, in a reasonably well-established business, I think that's a great result. So India is important in terms of scale, but it's also important because um, the team here have always um, stayed in touch with global developments, and they've always been quite keen as what, they'd, what we, we would call early adopters. They see something in another market that they like, they bring it into India, they reinvent it and reshape it for the Indian market, and off they go. They're very entrepreneurial. So it's a market that's important for scale, but it's also doing some interesting work, um, which we can then share with other markets. So I think India is a leading, I would say, in the top five leading poster scope markets. It does vary enormously. So if you go to the USA, it's actually um, 3% roughly of advertising budgets are spent on out of home. And that hasn't grown a huge amount since I've been in the business. So you can either say that's a real challenge or a real opportunity. I think I've been saying it's a real opportunity for 10 years, but it is a real opportunity. Um, in some European markets, you've got 9, 10, 11% share. Um, so in the UK, for example, it's about 10% of total ad spend. And so for various reasons, um, um, the share does vary from one market to another. I think that out of home in India, correct me if I'm wrong, Harish, is a really important medium to advertisers and so enjoys a much higher share of total ad spend. Um, I, is it in the region of 10? Yes. 10% and growing, I suspect. In my opinion, it's only my opinion. I think that you need to see a bit more consolidation on the media owner side. Um, what we've seen everywhere else in the world is that when you have less players, there is more investment. It's when you've got lots and lots and lots of small owners, they tend to actually invest less collectively in the medium. You also get more collaboration when you've got a smaller number of players, you can, there's more opportunity to sit down and talk about growing the medium. And I think that's important. I think the medium needs to work together um, to achieve that growth. So that's helpful. That's much more difficult if you've got a lot of people to gather around you for that conversation. I think that with that investment, you'll get uh, more digital and I think that's critical because digital is going to become increasingly important. One day, everything will be digital. Um, at the moment, it's about 2 or 3% in India. 
Um, I think that it's a bit behind some of the other markets. And I think one of those reasons is that, that sort of lack of consolidation and investment. And we've really seen this take off digital investment in other markets where you've got small players. I think another thing that would be really helpful would be some investment collectively in audience data. There isn't a sort of currency for the whole medium. And I think that would be really helpful. Um, because at the end of the day, it's about making the case for out of home. And for us, it's about making the case for out of home versus other media. And so it's helpful if we've got some sort of independent currency where we can use that um, to demonstrate the effectiveness of the medium. So those would be my sort of top sort of th issues, really, um, to tackle if we want to really grow the medium and, and take it forward in India. I think for Postoscope India, they've got um, everything they do, they sort of um, think carefully about, take a long-term view on. Um, and so in the beginning, it was all about training people, and that continues to be the case. There's a lot of uh, focus still on training people to do um, proper out-of-home planning using the tools that are, that are here. There's a new tool that's been developed um, in the ambient area to optimise ambient planning, and I think that's exactly the right way to go. So um, I think the focus will be continued investment in how to make the medium accountable, how to demonstrate the effectiveness of the medium, how to demonstrate ROI, and I think that's right to, to continue that level of investment. So training, investment in people, investment in the efficiency and effectiveness of the medium, and I think still pioneering. One of the things that, I mean, I'm in touch with the team here on a regular basis, but one of the things that really struck me today when I saw seven or eight or nine pieces of work is they are every bit as good as any work I've seen anywhere else in the world. So high quality, um, pioneering, breaking the boundaries, constantly looking to do things differently. Those, I think, continue to be the ambitions and the efforts of Postoscope in India. I think it's a challenge for everybody in today's market in the media comms business because there are so many digital startups. There's a lot of movement. People move from one business to another much more easily. Um, so you have to, I think you have to do a number of things um, to attract and to keep talent. And it's not just about money. I think investing in people's careers is very important to them. And so uh, Postscope, we've always had taken a long-term attitude to investing in people. In the UK, for example, we um, are part of um, Investors in People scheme where we've achieved gold standard. In other markets, we do a similar um, sort of local initiative, which is about investing in our people, keeping up the training. I think um, increasingly, when we're seeing a bit of movement across the world, which I'm really excited about. Um, the last time we checked, we've got about eight people who've moved from one post to scope in one country to post to scope in another. And I think that's really good news for us as a brand to get that consistency, but also for young um, people coming into the business, that opportunity to go and work in another market. It's not something that money can buy. So that's an initiative that we're going to keep building on. Um, the other thing we're looking at, um, which is a more recent one, um, we're looking at doing an exchange program. So with, the, with Japan, for example, we're going to have a group of people go to Japan for a week and in turn we're going to have a group of people come from Japan to London. And we were discussing this morning doing the same thing with India, having um, a group of people come from Postoscope in India and from the UK um, back into India. So I think 
giving people the opportunity to work in different cultures, to experience different markets is important. Um, investing in their career is important. And I think also, I think if you're doing good work, um, if you're doing good work and you're winning awards, people are excited about that. They like to work with companies that, do, that win and that do great work. Um, and so they should. Um, so um, producing great work is also a, a good way to attract and keep talent, in my view. If I was to say to you that India, in terms of its profit, would be in the top four markets in the world, would that be helpful? The UK is obviously significantly larger than, than the others, but India would be a close second or third. So an important contributor. Um, in terms of um, the other question was about the focus, the business focus for India going forward. So I think that um, in, the, in the immediate, the next year or two, I think it's about um, continuing to develop the product, continue to invest in um, insight and effectiveness continue with the people training. And really, um, there are very ambitious, I would say quite hungry team. They like to go out and win business. So I think expect to see lots of uh, pitching and, and, and going after business and lots of successful pitching, I hope. Um, but certainly, I think building on everything that we've done so far, no major changes in strategy but just keep going building on everything we've done so far and also i think that we should take a lead in digital in this market i know it's only three percent there's a lot of education to be done we've got a lot of experience from around the world that we can share with harish and we will share with harish that he can in turn um, share with the with the market here to try and accelerate that digital growth. Well, if you if you think about what we're doing with digital in um, around the world, so let me give you some examples in the UK. We're able to put content on screens in real time. Um, we're able to use data to help us decide what that content should be. Um, so, for example, um, a campaign that ran recently for Microsoft for Cortana, which is um, the sort of competitor to, to, to Siri, the Apple the voice, um, we had to get over quite a complicated uh, message, actually, because it's quite a complicated proposition to, um, to users. And we also had to cut through the, the, the noise from, from Apple and, and other competitors. And so what we did is we used data, and the sort of data we used was sort of weather conditions. We used data about, um, in certain locations of people at bus stops, data about when their next bus would arrive. It might be, if it's near an airport, data about local flights. And all the time using that to remind them that Cortana could help them with that information. So we brought to life the Cortana proposition in real time in many, many, many different ways. And so the end result of that was we had something like 10,000 copy changes um, talking in a sort of almost in a one-to-one, -one, having a one-to-one -one conversation, but on scale because we did it on thousands of sites across the country. So the whole role for Out of Home um, has shifted. It used to be that Out of Home was limited to awareness and impact. But now you can have a conversation with consumers. You can target them. You can use mobile data around a location of a poster site to actually select your target audience. You can use data to tell you... Um, who's around. You can use um, real-time data. We've used real-time data for recruitment companies to talk about jobs that are available in that location. So you can imagine there are endless possibilities and that expands the role for out of home. So I think that its future is probably brighter than ever. I don't see it being um, less relevant in a digital world but more relevant.
in more ways. I think that here, obviously, the real challenge is the infrastructure. We need to see more digital panels being built before we can start to do it. Everything that I've just talked about, we could do in India tomorrow, but not at scale. We could do it on a handful of locations. We could make them interactive. We can connect them. Um, we can use beacon technology to send out messages on mobiles, etc. All that can be done today in India. But it's the scale that's the issue, um, because the infrastructure isn't there. So there are three completely independent um, out-of-home agencies. Postoscope looks after Dentsu Aegis agencies. Uh, Milestone is a separate business entirely and competes um, on a regular basis with Postoscope. And Brandscope looks after a number of other agencies outside of, of, of Dentsu Aegis. So they all work quite independently. They um, do their planning um, independently of each other um, and are quite sort of separate in terms of the teams. What you have got is some shared services, um, creative for example, um, if they want to have some creative input um, and also some insight, the OCS, our consumer insight, we use across two of those brands, not all of them. So um, there is some shared service, but the planning and the buying is quite independent of each other. They're separate agencies. I wouldn't say no. Organic growth is going very well here. Um, but we're always looking at interesting acquisitions. And as we diversify our offer, um, sometimes that takes us into new areas. So we're always, always um, happy to look at potential acquisitions, actually. No question about it, especially in India. Okay, one last question. Uh, so uh, what, what do you see are the reasons behind Postscope's success in India? I think... Um, I think my perspective is that there's a, a real commitment which was longer term. So the thinking wasn't short term. It wasn't about just going out and grabbing business and buying campaigns. It was about really investing in trying to do it differently. And that, um, that has taken some time and effort to do that. And commitment and sticking to that vision, investing in a better understanding of the consumer, training people really well, investing in um, tools, building tools to make the business look more efficient and accountable, and making sure that the product is genuinely differentiating and genuinely better. And I think all that investment will pay off um, increasingly. It's already a very fast-growing business, but I believe that um, there's, it's got a long way to go because all those deep roots now that have been planted through that longer-term thinking, that commitment to sort of really deliver a best-in-class, out-of-home campaign to clients, listening to what clients want and making it happen. Is that okay? <laughs>